On today's ChurchTechCast.com Q&A show, is ProPresenter 6 right for us, live streaming sync, HDMI problems, and TriCaster for churches? Hi, and welcome again to the ChurchTechCast.com Q&A show. This is the show where every week I answer your church tech questions. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. Our first question comes to us from Jim Castleman, who sent me this email. Hi, Paul. I'm a pastor of a small church that is going to be losing our main music guy this coming year. I need to be able to import music, hymns, and praise type songs and project them onto the screen. I've used PowerPoint for projecting words on the screen, but I'm looking for something that will make the synchronization easier and the whole production process less time consuming. I've done as much research as I can online and have watched your videos, but most of them don't seem to answer the basic question, is this the right program for us? I would need to get some Macs and then purchase the program and whatever else would be necessary. I obviously don't want to make the investment if it's going to be overkill. Well, thanks a lot for your question, uh, Jim. The... The problem here is I can't say if something is right for you without knowing every last detail of your situation. So here's what I would do if I were in your situation and uh, without further information. First off, I'd uh, download OpenLP and OpenSong. Try those out. They're free. So all you're losing is your time. I mean, that's valuable, but still... Uh, I would do that. With that said, for what you're doing, ProPresenter would be awesome. It would do exactly what you want to do, and it's uh, probably better for the process than what you're doing now. So, what should you do? Well, it depends. I'd start out with something free just to test out. If that doesn't work, go for something uh, paid. Usually when something's free, you pay for it in time or frustration. So it could be that that will be the enough where you go, well, I'm not paying a music guy, and in a couple of weeks, I will have paid for the software with his salary. So really, when you think about it, it's not that you're paying a lot for software and hardware. You're paying for automation to replace this particular role. And then once you have someone back in place, you will uh, pick up with, um, you'll already have the tools and you'll be able to take it to the next level. So I really like that as an option. Todd Wise, again via email, says, Hello Paul, I'm the media director at our church. We live stream services, Bible studies, and etc. For the past month, I've noticed that the video and audio are not in sync. Could this be due to the upload speed with our ISP? We currently have 4 megabits of upload speed. I have noticed, I have also noticed that when I view the stream from my phone using the Wi-Fi, it tends to buffer a lot. When I use my cellular 4G data, it doesn't have the, that issue. Would you let me know if you have a solution to the issue? issue? Members in the sanctuary are using the Wi-Fi as well as our church administration. There are a couple of things that could be going on. Um, Normally, upload speed isn't as affected by things as download speed. So that would be why you're seeing the buffering. Um, But on the sync issue... It could be that your encoder really isn't beefy enough for that. Uh, The upload speed that you're talking about, uh, 4 megabits per second, that seems like that that would be enough. Unless you're doing like 1080p, 60 frames per second, or something like that. In which case, you're bumping up against it. So... You haven't told me exactly all the settings, so I can't tell you absolutely that you don't have enough upload speed. But if you're doing 720.30, 
or less, you should be fine. Unless, as I say, there's someone that's, you know, doing Facebook Live in the in the children's area or the youth area, something like that where it's really sucking down your upload speed. So the two things that I would look at is I would look at is anyone else doing massive uploading? Is that affecting the network? Secondly, I would look at my encoder. I'm a big fan of hardware encoders because they tend to be less expensive than a computer and a capture card and the software. And then there's an update and it messes the whole thing up. So I really like hardware encoders. The Teradek video is a good example of one that works really well. Um, Boxcast, if you want something dead simple, but the Boxcaster doesn't go to other platforms. So it's a $500 outlay that you won't get back if you try and change to a different service. The Church Streamer that they have at churchstreaming.tv is a good option, and that does follow you. Uh, you know, not if you just use it for a month, but if you use it for several months or years, and then you decide, nah, I want a different service, you can take that hardware with you. It's not locked down. So those are the things that I would uh, look into if I were you. Jay Long, in response to my article, VGA, DVI, and HDMI, how to connect your church projector over on Church Mag. That's uh, C-H-U-R-C-H-M dot A-G. I'm hoping someone can help me with our church projector problem. We have a ceiling-mounted projector that's 150 feet cable run from the media booth. I've been using HDMI over CAT6 with the sender receiver Balin units. It worked consistently for about eight months with a problem, and recently, without a problem, probably what he means, and recently the projector would not recognize the signal. I repa- replaced the Balin units, but it still would not work. I swapped out the projector with another one, and we had it, we had, and it worked for about two weeks, and now the same problem. Cat6 cable checks out perfectly, so I'm stumped. I was thinking about running uh, direct HDMI fiber to correct the problem, but have been reading about SDI, HDI, K, H, SD, HDI cable. I'm going to guess he means HDSDI. The problem is that we are using a data video SE500 switcher with an RCA to HDMI converter. I would love to get rid of all the points of failure at the converters. Uh, Pastor might be willing to approve an upgrade to a digital switcher like the data video SE700. The problem is we have an RCA input coming from camera and another one from computer. Any ideas? Um, first off, Balins, I've heard of several installations where they run into problems. It's probably because HDMI is engineered to fail if there's any sort of problem whatsoever because it interprets any sort of problem as saying, uh-oh, this must be pirated. It's like a paranoid kind of standard. That's what HDMI feels like to me. I'm not saying I know that. I'm saying it feels like it to me personally. With that said, I do some freelancing for a local AV firm. In fact, I need to call them back right after I'm done recording this. And they use SDI without any problems whatsoever. And that's ripping it out putting it in, ripping it out, putting it in over and over and over and over and over again. So it's very robust. Now it's more expensive. Part of the problem I think you're running into is because HDMI is digital, it's either there or it's not there. Occasionally you'll get it cutting in and out, but generally it's either there or it's not there. You know, one or zero, on or off. So Almost working is just a hair away from not working at all or working perfectly. So 
just barely working can look like, oh, everything's wonderful for several months, and then maybe there's a little corrosion on one of the connectors. One thing I'd do is I'd re-terminate the ends. I'd also try those balins with a short piece of Cat5, see if the problem goes away. It could be that there's something that you're testing of the Cat, I guess it's Cat6, doesn't reveal that um, if you were to actually uh, do it another way, you'll come in into that as a problem. So I don't think that, I think that it was just barely working before, and now it's just barely not working, but, you know, digital. Guitar Guts 666 on YouTube in response to my video, using ProPresenter as a live switcher and why that's not a good idea, writes, Buy a TriCaster if you want to do uh, video production switching in good HD-SDI cameras, whether they are robotic a la Panasonic or JVC that can do PoE Plus for power and control. Minimum TriCaster would be the TC410 in order to have low latency and good lip sync and the ability to iMag to a screen live with a pastor or choir if needed. Or a TC410 or above with all have Genlock ability, so do Panasonic AWHE-130 robotic broadcast cameras are the best. Uh, you have to keep video delay below one frame on output. This way, if you have to hit a projector, remember you're going to add another frame of delay to the signal if you're using a scaling switcher. You need to be under three frames in order to have perfect lip sync, otherwise you'll never be able to use a live switched camera on a projector in Sanctuary. If you hang a camera upside down, then you're adding a frame of delay for the chip to flip the image, so keep all of this in mind. Good point, except I'm not a big fan of the TriCaster. Here's why. The TriCaster is basically a Windows XP box. They might have upgraded them uh, to a newer version of Windows, but it's still Windows. Haven't you ever had a computer crash? Yeah, uh, that's a problem. Um, if it were based on Linux, I wouldn't be as concerned, but Windows can have issues, and they're very susceptible to viruses, so that's something else to consider if you're connected to a network, which you probably would be because you'd probably want to live stream. So, all in all, not a big fan of the TriCaster. I know a lot of people use it without problems, but it's just something for you to consider. Um, with that said, I agree that you need to keep your delay as minimal as possible, and adding components tends to add delay, but also keep in mind that the video that this is a response to was why ProPresenter should not be used as a video switcher. So there are a lot of great options other than ProPresenter for a video switcher. If you want to switch between slides and pre-recorded videos, great. But there are churches that use the live view option in ProPresenter like it makes it into a video switcher, and that's really not a good idea. And as it turns out, having more than one input for cameras, it just it's not designed for that. So if I were in that situation, I would have a hardware video switcher, uh, bare minimum an ATEM uh, from Blackmagic or a Roland, and go from there. So I hope that answered your question. If you have any questions that I haven't answered here, no problem. Just head over to trinitydigitalmedia.com and uh, you can ask them there on any of the posts or in the contact uh, information. If you like this content, I bet you like my email newsletter, so head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash newsletter and pick up your copy there. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with trinitydigitalmedia.com. Go out and change eternity.
hey, on your way to going out to change eternity, I want you to do this one quick little thing. Just take a second, click subscribe, and then click on the little bell icon to get notifications so that you can find out when these videos are posted and enter the contest that I'll have within the first 24 hours.